Happy holidays, traders. Today, we're excited to bring you a brand new feature. Inside all three of our premium toolkits, you'll now find our all new alert scripting feature. If you head to settings and scroll down, you'll spot a new section called alert scripting. This is hands down our most powerful alert system yet. It lets you create alerts using just about any of the features within the toolkit, along with up to five external indicators. We first have the condition input field, which is where we'll be crafting our alerts. Just below that, you can set your preferred time zone for those alerts, and you'll also see five external source options. We'll come back to those external sources in a minute. For now, let's focus on creating alerts. You'll be using what's called operators and placeholders to create them. Let's say I wanted an alert to be triggered only during the New York session. What I can do is start with an open curly bracket, type 0, 0900 to 1700, and then close the curly bracket. This is formatted in hours and minutes. You'll notice that bars appear at the top of my chart, showing that exact time period. Now that we have our time input, I can start defining more parameters for this. I'll type AND, which is our first operator in these alerts, next open curly bracket and type bullish, underscore confirmation, underscore any, and then close the curly bracket. Then we type OR, which is another operator, open curly bracket 0, 0900 to 1700, close the curly bracket and open curly bracket, bearish, underscore, confirmation, underscore any, and close the curly bracket. Let's break down what we've written here. We're looking at price action between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m., and we're looking for any bullish confirmation signal or bearish confirmation signal occurring during that time. The bearish confirmation and bullish confirmation are just some of the many placeholders you'll have access to for crafting really complex and cool ideas. And now if you look, you'll notice the bar only highlights signals that occur within that period. Let's look at another example. In this example, we're using the steps feature. Let's say we have an idea for an early short reversal strategy where we wait for a bullish exit signal, then a bearish confirmation signal, and finally the trend catcher turning bearish. In order to create steps, we need to use line breaks. Notice how each placeholder is on its own line, with each line representing its own step. So we have placeholders for the exit signal, which is step one, the bearish confirmation signal, and the trend catcher being bearish for step three. As you can see, the alert got triggered right as the trend catcher was confirmed. Now, these are pretty cool, but very simple. Let's work on something a little more complex here. Looking at this trade idea, when the price falls like this, there is sometimes a strong pullback, like we had here. So instead, what I would do is have the price first retrace above the trend catcher, and then once it gets back below the trend catcher, I'll consider taking an entry. That way, I know the retracement has already happened. But before the alert is triggered, I want to make sure it's coming down with a lot of force. So I'm going to add a Bollinger Band to my chart. I'm going to use the lower band as part of my strategy. So we'll go back to our external sources here, find the Bollinger Band I just added, and locate the plot for the lower band. Now that lower band is aligned to external source one. So here's my script for this alert. We have a total of five steps here. So we have the exit signal, followed by a bearish signal. The trend catcher must then be bearish. The price must close above the trend catcher and then close lower than external source one, which we have set to our Bollinger lower band. So with that inputted, we can see our alert got triggered exactly where we wanted. We can take this further. If you notice, we had a period here where the trend catcher turned bullish. What if we wanted to invalidate the sequence if this happened between steps? Invalidating a sequence will restart it at step one, and this alert should no longer be triggered. To do this, we'll need to define our invalidation conditions. So we'll type invalidate equals and the conditions we want to invalidate on, which in this case is if the trend catcher turns bullish. Now you'll see that no alert is triggered because the sequence was invalidated and you can have multiple conditions to invalidate a sequence. Now, that might have been quite a lot to take in, so we won't overload you by providing too much information today. This is just scratching the surface of what is possible with this new scripting feature we've added, and it's available in all three toolkits. We have full documentation available on our website, which you'll be able to dive into 
to fully understand how to use this tool and all the placeholders and operators that are available to you. We can't wait to see what you guys create with this feature. We thank you for watching and we'll see you in our next video.